Hello and welcome, everybody, to another episode of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Bill Roth, self-proclaimed Silicon Valley marketing genius. This is the show where we review last week's news in the world of quantum computing and its impacts on the world of cybersecurity, AI, and more. And with us to discuss it this week is, as always, Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations, and La Jefa, Rebecca Krauthammer, co-founder and chief product officer at QSecure. Welcome to you both. Hello, hello. Last week, uh, there were a bunch of news items. It kind of feels like a, a little bit of a IBM week. Um, they launched a quantum system roadmap. Quantum also got some coverage in 60 Minutes. And also the quantum legislation that we've been watching in Congress moved forward in a highly divided Congress. Let's get started by talking to our experts. Brandon, what's up first? Yes, sir. We're going to jump over to Forbes.com and their article titled, IBM launches Quantum System 2 and a roadmap to quantum advantage. So IBM announced its path to achieve over 100,000 qubits and over a billion circuit gates. Uh, when realized IBM may create the world's first platform for universal computation in a quantum system. Uh, Becca, it sounds like another one to add to the qubit scorecard. It absolutely is. This is the year of the thousand qubits. So if you'll remember earlier this year, um, Atom Computing crossed the thousand qubit threshold. And now we've got IBM. IBM is amazing because they have this quantum roadmap. You can Google it or you can look at our qubit scorecard right here. And they never miss, like it, in their history, they've said, we're gonna hit this number by this date and they're on track. So when they put this out and they say, we're gonna be at 100,000 qubits by this year, you can pretty much rely on IBM to, to deliver. Um, it's, next year is gonna be a really exciting year. We're gonna start to see exciting use cases and that's what we're all holding out for, right? Qubit counts cool. Air correction is cool. All these things are super important, but at the end of the day, what we really want to see is that use case that we can all point to and say, hey, it solved this problem that we couldn't even dream of solving on classical. So that's really what I think we can expect from 2024. And um, final side note on IBM, did, did you, I mean, you guys know, because we're all quantum nerds, uh, but you can go on and program the IBM quantum computer right now. Visual programmer. So if you navigate and, and use something called Qiskit, um, you can actually program a real life quantum computer. So I encourage everyone to go out and do that. It's pretty cool. Just a, and also a quick reminder: subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay on top of all things quantum. Uh, there should be a subscribe link, depending on your platform, below. Um, Brandon, our second article has to do with Google and IBM and their sort of strides. Apparently, they got some coverage on 60 Minutes. Tell us about it. Yeah, 60 Minutes Sunday night was on the TV in uh, the, my household here. Um, really interesting piece that they put out, covered the IBM news, new Google news. Uh, the tagline for the, the online article they put out was Quantum Computing, a technology being developed at IBM, Google, and others. It's named for quantum physics, which describes the forces of the subatomic realm. Uh, Becca, there was a lot of great stuff in this piece, uh, they covered the IBM news. There was a familiar example of how quantum computers could finish a maze. Um, they also had mention of post-quantum cryptography and uh, some of the other stuff going through uh, the government for quantum as well. Yeah, I. Uh, it's because we, we've been in this quantum space for years now. Um, but it's so cool to see like it coming out and being kind of explained in a very public and mass audience way. And I think um, I, I think that's in itself a huge deal, right? We're starting to talk about it at dinner parties. Um, and it highlighted, of course, the, the typical use cases quantum's going to, in the future, disrupt chemistry, disrupt financial optimization, disrupt a lot of these um, really real use cases. And it called out IBM, who had their big announcement the day after, I believe, Google, and of course, all of the events that, that I go to or speak at and that we're all involved in, whenever we talk about quantum, we have to talk about the cybersecurity threat. Um, and they explained it really well. And the net net, of course, is that quantum is poised to break encryption, but do not fear. Uh, there is a solution and 
that main solution is called post-quantum cryptography. Excellent. So Brandon, number three happens to be something I'm super excited by. Tell us about it. Give us the headline. Well, after all the news um, and quantum technology advancement that we've had this past week, there's a new bill um, that passed uh, a committee uh, and looks like well, the tagline here is a uh, major piece of legislation dedicated to growing the U.S.'s domestic quantum sciences and technology industry passed a House of Representatives committee vote with the inclusion of 19 new amendments. Uh, the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee held a final markup hearing for legislation on Wednesday last week, and that saw the National Quantum Initiative Act reauthorization pass unanimously out of the committee, and now it's going to advance towards the House floor. Bill, can you tell us about it? Oh, and you know I love this. This is for you folks who are paying attention. This is H.R. 6213, which has been on a kind of a rapid track through Congress. Um, introduced on the 3rd of November. You probably heard about it first on this podcast. Um, just made it out of the Subcommittee on Science, Space, and Technology ranking, or the chair is Frank Lucas. And of course, the ranking member is uh, our local Congress person, Zoe Lofgren, the Honorable Zoe Lofgren. Look, I mean, this is in one sense, I think what you can glean from this is uh, that this is important. Why? One, it passed the... Almost nothing ends up with a unanimous vote out of a real fractured committee. So this passed 36 to 0 in committee to go to the floor. Second, it's being done in an odd year so that this is going to get done before things heat up before the uh, election cycle uh, next November. And that's usually where they put legislation that is important that, uh, that people need to pay attention to and don't want to play too much of a football with. So... Um, I think this is big. We will, of course, uh, keep an eye on this, and you can all subscribe to this bill at congress.gov and get up-to-the-minute updates uh, for that. So uh, that about wraps it up for us today. You can find links to all the articles mentioned today in the show notes, and if you want weekly quantum updates, join our mailing list by visiting our LinkedIn page. Uh, LinkedIn's got a great way to uh, manage that uh your subscriptions that's all for today's show i am your humble host bill roth and with us this week has been brandon dennis director of operations and rebecca crothammer co-founder and product officer chief product officer of q secure thank you both thanks guys always a hoop thanks everyone indeed we'll see you next week on last week in quantum <laughs>